Item number 13 is Allen Supermarket, Lime Main Road, Keswell. Commission may start for evaluation of condition 2 to allow the deliveries to take place between the hours of 0700 and 2200. <coughs> the store is currently restricted by condition allowing deliveries between 0800 and 1800 hours. The Commission was granted in December 2014 allowing the store to be open from 0800 to 2200 hours, although at that time delivery times remained unchanged. I will give now outline that their current delivery hours are resulting in delivery difficulties for the store. The site is located in a primarily commercial area, although there are some residential properties nearby. The uses associated with the store are not out of place within a primarily commercial area, and as with most such areas, some level of disturbance may be expected. It is not considered that the additional hours applied for would result in a level of noise or disturbance that would impact on the character of the area, especially having regard to the site of designation as a primary commercial area. The application is recommended for approval. Um, we have received a late objection, which is reported on the uh, a late petition of objection. That's reported on the late petition. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Would you like to state your name? Yep. address and you have at least five minutes to speak. Yeah, I'm Kevin Adams, I live at 8 Darrell Road, which is on the corner of the site. Um, yes, you yes just press the school button. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'm Kevin Adams, I live at 8 Darrell Road, on the corner of the site, adjacent to the site. Um, I am actually closer to the truck uh, manoeuvres uh, than the chair is to me now. So it's five paces from my bedroom to the site where the, the truck circle. This is true of neighbours on all four sites. I feel that the officer's uh, comments there were slightly inaccurate because there are residential properties right around the site. Although the site is on the commercial uh, area, it actually ba the boundary of the site is the commercial boundary. So we've got residents um, all around the site. And if I could just briefly take you through to set some context, the top of Main Road is a steep road and the 44 foot articulated refrigerated trucks which I suggest are approximately the length of this room turn down that road and therefore use their gears more because it's steep. The first four properties are residential, they have no front garden, they only have room to park a car and therefore their bedrooms and lounges are um, again closer to the trucks than I am to the chair. The trucks go past, turn left onto the site, and then head towards neighbours on Darrell Road. At night, their lights and their disturbance goes directly towards houses that are occupied by very elderly people, and three houses that have very young children, and clearly that, that is the disturbance for them. The trucks turn left, they do a big circle, which is now um, a, more difficult for the trucks because a substation is being allowed to be built there, but the trucks will manoeuvre and reverse back to the same property on Main Road, I think it's number seven, and park a dock, I should say, um, to unload. They then spend sometimes 50 minutes moving pallets and, and such like around inside the vehicle, and that can be heard all over the site. To suggest that that doesn't change I don't know what the word immediately means, but it doesn't change the atmosphere of that area at 10 o'clock at night is a travesty. It's, it's simply wrong. Lots of the movements of the trucks and the noises during the day are subsumed in the ordinary town centre noise. We understand that. We don't object to Aldi being there, we don't object to the trucks, we are Aldi's customers. All the petitioners said to me, they shop there. All we want is for Aldi to behave as a reasonable neighbour which is what I would be expected to behave as where I, uh, next to all the they would expect me to be reasonable. I think their application to extend the hours, and they've already got 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock, is my understanding, not 6 o'clock, as the officer said. Um, my, my understanding is that if they ask for this extension, I think that that is unreasonable on their part. Now, in the notes that I've been given here, and I guess yourselves have been given, <coughs> could, could I draw your attention to one of the things there? It says under appearance and immunity issues, 
that they've often, Aldi have admitted to operating 25 or 50 percent of their trucks outside of planning times, which I thought they weren't allowed to do, um, without complaint. That is nonsense. We have been on to Aldi time and time again. We've visited the store, we've written to, I've written to Manchester about it, I've telephoned Aldi, we never get a reply. Local neighbours have done the same thing, one of my neighbours stood in front of the truck to stop it moving, and so on. And, and so you can see that I'm rather emotional about it, but what I would simply like to ask you to do is to allow Aldi to be as successful as they are now, but to be a good neighbour and to, and to restrict their time to what they've got now, 8 o'clock to 8 o'clock, okay. and they're very successful. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Peter. Any more councillors? Are, are you the applicants? Yeah. Sorry, we're all. <coughs> Take your name and uh, you have five minutes to speak. Thank you, Chair, members. Uh, my name is Mike Hopkins. I'm a planning consultant from JLL. I'm here this evening to represent the applicant, Ali Stores Limited. Uh, we welcome the officer's recommendation to approve the application. Mr. Parry Davis has covered most of the, the issues, but I'll highlight one or two issues. The proposed development seeks to align the delivery hours at Heswell with other stores in the borough. The store currently can only accept deliveries between the hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. I'm sure the officers will confirm that. It's the restriction. While they're seeking to find permission to deliver between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., it was brought to our attention in January this year that Aldi would delivering goods to the store outside of permitted development, permitted delivery hours. This has been acknowledged by Aldi, and they, this was an oversight on their behalf. They've apologised for this and immediately rectified this, this error since that time. They now only deliver within the permitted delivery hours. That's not true. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, my apologies. As part of the application, we provided evidence that between those dates, uh, they were delivering 50% of deliveries outside those hours, and they apologised for this. The store sits within a designated primarily commercial area, as shown in the EDP, with a range of uses, including retail, considered acceptable. Thus, there is an expectation that the store should be able to receive deliveries to allow it to function, to operate. We understand that the letter of objection focus on noise and safety, it's important that members recognise that delivery vehicles turn their engines off once they're docked on site. Aldi has an internal loading and unloading system whereby vehicle reverse and lock into a dock sleep, so goods are transferred directly into the building. This is unlike most supermarkets which unload in the service yard on wheeled noisy trolleys through the yard. Aldi's system is quieter and quicker than most supermarkets. The time of day that Aldi delivers its goods is vital to their operation to satisfy the needs of customers. At the moment, the store cannot deliver, receive deliveries until 8 a.m. This is also when the store opens. It means that delivery vehicles arrive on site while customers are in the car park. It also means that fresh goods, including milk, fruit, vegetables and bread, don't reach the store's shelves until 8.30 at the earliest. This results in staff stocking shelves when the store is open and getting in the way of customers and their trolleys. If Aldi can deliver an hour earlier at 7 a.m., fresh produce can be on the shelves once by the time the store opens. Currently, the latest Aldi can receive deliveries at 6 p.m. This means that all deliveries have to be crammed into the main trading period of the store. Aldi's on-site warehouse is very small, as it is an efficient design to receive goods and send them straight to the shop floor. However, with this limited delivery period, staff are unable to transfer the goods onto the sh shop floor fast enough to satisfy customers. The later hours proposed are also necessary to bring fresh goods and ambient goods as late as possible to help the store replenish its shelves before it opens in the morning. Current hours don't allow that. Members will be aware that your environmental health officer and highways officer are not objecting to the application, acknowledging that it's an appropriate activity. In fact, the arrangements proposed would be safer as deliveries are at peak periods of the day when there are less customers in the store, off peak periods, less customers in the store. Therefore, we respectfully ask 
members to support the recommendation of officers to approve the application so that Aldi can operate a successful business and satisfy the needs and demands of their customers. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Mike. There's no more councillors here, is there? Okay, so David, Paul. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Chair. Um, the number of points I'd like to raise, not necessarily in the right order, as they say in these uh, television programmes. Um, standardising deliveries, you know, the fact that you find you're commercially obliged to try and standardise your deliveries on what are a selection of unique locations with totally different characters and surroundings is not really of great interest to this planning department. We're trying to look after the residents in the areas where you operate. And as you've admitted yourself, and I think 30 other people have admitted, this site may be a commercial location, totally accepted it's in the Unit for Development Plans Act, but it's surrounded on about three and a half sides by residential properties that are very close. There's already been problems in the past with you failing to comply with your own proposals to deal with the delivery issue, resulting in your necessity to apologise after practically having been pushed into it, which I find quite unacceptable. The situation as we have it at the moment is that this increase in hours represents an unread, totally uh, unreasonable and unneighbourly disturbance and loss of amenity to the people who've lived in this area for a very long time. And I don't think it's acceptable. And to increase that facility by five hours from 7 o'clock to 2200 rather than the existing 8 until 6 o'clock. I just find it totally unacceptable. I can understand your commercial operation. My brothers have been in commercial activity for the last 40 years trying to make ends meet. But you shouldn't be trying to run your commercial um, operations to the detriment of the people who both rely on you for the service you provide and also have to live adjacent to where you're operating. So I would want to think in terms of moving the refusal for this particular application on the ground that it represents an unreasonable, unneighbourly disturbance and loss of amenity to local people, which is unacceptable, within which clause I would have to ask the officers. But I'd like others to think about this and hear what they have to say. Thank you, David. Paul? Thanks, Chair. I think uh, David has very eloquently, as usual, sort of summarised my concerns in relation uh, to this application. I mean, I speak with some um, some experience, if you like, of, of these matters, given I live very closely as well to a, a supermarket and I'm awoken quite often with deliveries and what have you. But the point is, I chose to live where I do, knowing full well that there's a supermarket there and having the expectations that I might be awoken earlier or there may well be some late night deliveries. I think the people here have come to expect, given the protections we as a planning committee have afforded them, in relation to when deliveries can be made. It just seems as though Aldi has, has, has you know, wantonly either chosen not to look at what conditions we have placed upon them or have just you know, been incompetent in terms of not checking what the, uh, the various conditions are. But I, I find it wholly unacceptable for an outfit such as Aldi to just say that this was a, an oversight, really. You know, it is very hard to believe. I know the nuisance these, these types of deliveries can cause, whether you're using trolleys or not, it does mean that people are a little bit earlier than they need to be. Um, so I, I'm completely supportive of David's uh, comments and I won't be moving and refused, or I won't be moving for this to be approved. Okay, Phil, right yeah. Um, As I said, I said, what I want to say about that, I could. But I just can rest as I said, I expressed how great fan that they've so frequently broke what was previously put in place. Um, well, here we go. Um, another, another clash with supermarkets. Well, first <coughs> in taking them on and losing, uh, and, and being in that position where we have, by our own default, actually probably made uh, an error of judgment uh, when we've given uh, the application uh, permission to open, and there was lots of objection to those who were around at the time. We also find ourselves, so we try to placate residents when these things go through, which are not unpopular at the time. We impose conditions, and I think we've imposed a condition that was never going to be enforceable, quite frankly, in, in the original plan application. 
in the modern day, in a modern commercial area, is it reasonable to re restrict a modern business to such tight delivery hours when that is their peak time? And I don't think you'll have, pardon a phrase, a cat in hell's chance um, of defending that in the modern pro-business, you know, everyone wants to be pro-business, pro-business environments and the planning regimes that, that we deal with. I think we will have great difficulty uh, defending that, that reason and they will cite other, other applications. So I think we do have a very successful business providing jobs in a partially residential commercial area and it will always be that class where a residential area ends, commercial area starts. We deem it fit to have a successful supermarket on as a planning committee. We now are faced with operational difficulties of perhaps our own making. So just bear in mind that those conditions were probably imposed as far as the original application uh, and now they're, they're being challenged and would have to be defended. And I have great sympathy and would not choose personally, uh, Paul, I would not choose personally to live by um, a supermarket for lots of the reasons that, that residents give. But that is the position Planning Committee find, find itself in. Is, is, it, is it reasonable to to do that to a modern successful business in, in a commercial area. And I think you know we have to be very careful when we do, you know, we often get people saying, let's put condition on this, let's put condition on that. And the test that Matthew and the officers give, would that be, be deemed a reasonable condition? And that's that's a judgment I think planning committee really members have to make. Is that a reasonable condition to have to restrict those those delivery times within within, within those those times? Most of my hope that if it could be proved that this is of commercial damage to the uh, applicants, that they may well follow in an, an inquiry, which so one of you, not me, or one of you will have to go and possibly defend that, uh, an inquiry of some description if it's not a written inquiry. And you'll have, ju you have to justify wholeheartedly that those reasons for refusal, they may well be cost against the authority. I'm not saying that's a scare people, because I've been there, got the t shirt. When Upton supermarkets, uh, <coughs> quick save open, we put a restriction on that, uh, wasn't open on a, on a Sunday. We went to, to that, we defended that, and they turned around the, 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 the uh, you know, minister's uh, representative, uh, the, the planning inspector, said it's not reasonable to ask a supermarket not to trade on a Sunday anymore. But that was a condition we put down to the authority to protect us, and so it's very difficult the second conditions that are unenforceable. So I put uh, a moment of caution in your minds. Uh, as I said, I keep my mind right open to the very end, as you, you may well know when, when, when being persuaded. But they are considerations I think members may need some clarification on uh, and, and, and some thought, thought process going through the line. Uh, so that's my contribution. Thank you. Dave Mitchell. Well, thank you very much, Chair. I just wanted to. Just, um, it was um, a very interesting comment Steve made, and I uh, understand the design behind it. But I put the opposite in that when the company applied for this particular site, they agreed to the times as the application was presented. So that part of your argument is already defeated. They said it was acceptable for them to move on to the site and agree in the times that we've already stated. So there is no reason argument to change it in our minds. The planning history of the site goes before when it reached the big car sale through, etc. Residents had to put up with all sorts of different uh, problems in those days. But the report itself and uh, the agents himself actually said that they, they break the time scale now, but they're not doing anything about it as a company. And I think that's bad. He did. He did. I'm sorry, he did. Excuse me. Well, I'll, 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 st I'll stand rectified. I know, I know the uh, objective stated those, and it is in the report. Uh, he may have said that we, we haven't done that. But no, he did say they did initially, but they didn't realise there was still. Ah, ah, thank you. Time. So he did say oh, no. that. So he did say that. Yeah, right. He did say that. Thank you. Um, but what I would, what I would like oh, to, to go on to say is that it is one of those problems that we have as an authority because it's a, a close residential commercial area. It's quite close to the heart of the, you know, the 
the, the village town centre, whatever you want to call it. We live in that one, the village over town. Uh, it is close to, to the town centre. But there is a history on the site of previous things as well. All they came into this, they've uh, accepted the times that were quoted when they, they were given the initial application. So they should stand by. And I believe that's the argument we should stand by. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah, I'm not going to repeat what I think people have made some very relevant comments, um, but I think it is entirely reasonable to expect an outfit like Albany to obey the conditions that were applied originally, and they clearly haven't done that. I must say the apology comes across as very half-hearted from what I can gather. I'd just like to ask a question of clarification, really. If, if you're allowed deliveries to be up till 10 o'clock at night, does that mean we can deliver at 1 minute to 10 and continue? Basically, I think we heard from the petitioner that they continue, typically they continue for up to 50 minutes. So, in reality, deliveries would be taking place up to almost 11 o'clock. If the condition says that delivery should cease at 10 o'clock, then they should cease at 10 o'clock. If they continue beyond 10 o'clock, then there would be a breach of that condition. Thanks, Chair. Um, as a resident who lives quite close to London store, um, given the uh, increase in the extension of hours, I don't see it unreasonable for the delivery times to be 7am and 10pm because they're out of times and they are done and dusted before we get off and move. So there's less congestion on the road. And to me, I just don't think it's unreasonable. And I'd just like to express that for you. Thank you. Joe? I totally agree with Dave on this. Um, looking at the air, very surprised to see that they think that the commercial life area is I mean, that's primarily surrounded by residential properties. And as we've already been said, we're all joking, we're all going on our own road. Um, Aldi came there, he built there, he agreed to the hours, he didn't stick to the hours as we've already heard. But I can't see any reason why he should agree to those things. Sorry, I didn't mean to go on. I just want to clarify my position. While I find it, you know, acceptable that they've broken all the subscription place and been so that's not the reason why I'm going to refuse this. I'm going to refuse it on the basis of why it's been put forward. I don't think it's feasible to extend it with regards to the because the impact it will have on the immunity of the strong. When they originally went into the area now, they must have realised what was around. They must know what supply and demand must be to the maximum. So why didn't they, on a, a day one, come along and say oh, that our shop is going to sell X amount of a certain period of time, which they must have done the sums in their own way before and, and come up with the original figures that they wanted. I tend to think that a lot of these, not just all were others, they throw a figure in. A, a, a time margin in, thinking, oh, well, it's okay, it doesn't work, we'll, 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 we'll work the extra hour. This seems to be creeping on and on and on. Originally, when Aldi moved into that building, they must have done their own work to check what was going on and what supply and demand would be. So why didn't they come from day one and tell us exactly what they wanted? David? I'd love to extend this, my stronger chair. I think the thing is we have to ask ourselves, who are we trying to look after here? We're looking after commercial interests who arrive late on the site. Chair, 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 with respect, it's not due to the planning committee to, it's due to the planning committee to deal with the applications. Not protect or favour one side or the other. Let's be careful what we say. What we say, when you're going to be a bit of a to defend this, that's not what you're saying. Can we let David speak, please? I'm asking the question. I'm not saying what I'm doing, I'm asking the question. Is the planning committee try and look after the commercial interests of those in the borough, which clearly they must be, or in this instance, should they be taking precedence and give priority to the interests of the residents who have lost or likely to lose a lot of community value. The other concern is that it's been raised by others, Aldi and a lot of these supermarkets get on board and they gradually, incrementally increase their operating hours so they can make more and more profit, which is fine, I'm not against profit, I'm a conservative for goodness sake, but the point being, that if they put in for this application 
in these hours at this time when they first applied to build on the site, it would have been refused. They know that as well as we do. So it's a gradual imposition, it's a gradual incremental increase, and before we know, in two years' time, they'll be wanting to stay open until 12 o'clock at midnight, or maybe 24 hours a day, like this. So really, yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not representing the residents here, not my residents. I'm just trying to give a balanced view as to whether these people are being required to accept an unreasonable level of disturbance because Aldi want to improve their profit. I'm asking a question. If you don't think that's a relevant question, fine, that's your choice. Right, the officer's recommendation are for approval. Dave, Dave, Dave. Are you going to make a proposal, Dave? A refusal? Well, I'm not sure. Sorry. My advice is wrong. I'm concerned about it. It'll have to be my... Uh, is it even more dangerous? Right. Excuse me, can we just stop a minute? Yes, it is. That's enough. One at a time, please. The increase in hours represents an unneighbourly and unreasonable disturbance are you, actually, are you actually moving the snow labor? I don't know whether it is sufficiently um, strong in terms of that. I haven't quoted any talk yet. So you're not moving anything? Well, I'm not going to get any help on this from anybody. So leave it at that. We'll vote and we'll take it from there. Can we just go? Chair, can I move for refusal, please, on the grounds that this constitutes an unneighbourly un and unwelcome development or extension in opening hours and sort of delivery times which will adversely affect the amenity of local residents. Obviously I don't have the UDP in front of me, however I'm sure an officer would direct me as to what particular policy that would be applicable to. Thank you Matthew, so contrary to policy SH6. Okay, so do we have a second for the refusal? That's a All those in favour of refusing this application, please show. And all those for it? Against. Against the refusal, sorry. Thank you. 
lot of servicing and deliveries to bank banks between the hours of all 7 o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock at time. Currently, such operations are restricted by condition to 8 o'clock in the morning and to 9 o'clock on Monday to Saturday, and between 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Black holidays and Sundays. Planning approval was given in December 2014 to allow the store to operate between 8 o'clock in the morning and 11 o'clock at night. Monday to Saturday, and between 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock on Sundays and Black holidays. At that time, members resolved to also alter the hours of deliveries uh, uh, without any real justification, and that has resulted in this application coming forward today. The site is located in the primary residential area, although all the uh, is an established use. There are a number of houses opposite the site located over 25 metres from the premises. The delivery entrance faces the store car park. A detailed noise impact assessment has been submitted with this application, which has been considered and appraised, taking account of the British Standard and the World Health Organization's guidelines relating to reasonable standards of noise. That assessment has had particular regard to those hours when delivery would potentially have the biggest impact namely first thing in the morning and later in the evening. And in regards to the already approved store opening hours, the assessment indicates that noise impacts associated with the extended delivery hours would be low and have no significant impact. And those, uh, those findings have been um, agreed by our colleagues in, in environmental health. The proposals are recommended for approval. There's no petition of objection for this application. Councillor, I'm happy to have a delegation. Charles, are you speaking as a world councillor? Okay, well, I'll open it up to the committee. David? Uh, just very briefly, I'm not going to repeat what I said before, but if I remember, the, uh, the audience um, representative did say they were trying to achieve consistency across all their stores. Then, if that's the case, why have they applied the 7 until 2300 hours, which is 11 o'clock in old money? on this one in Morton, and only gone to 2200, which is 10 o'clock in our money in Heswell. That doesn't demonstrate consistency to me. It just demonstrates yeah, okay. We have to deal with one application at a time. Let me the discuss point this application now, though. The point was okay. consistency, yeah. OK? Oh, no. OK. Right, that was yeah, one. Excuse me. Excuse me. Karina. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Um, I am the local council for this board and I do live not far from this old uh, store. Um, given its um, thriving, welcoming, low-cost, no-frill supermarket that I applaud, um, I would have no objection in approving the extension of the delivery times. Bear in mind that they are, you know, there's, sorry? Excuse me, what reason? Um, but, you know, there would be less congestion and uh, less noise. And I would, yeah, I would welcome you. Um, yeah, I feel I should say I think this application is, is completely different to the previous one we, we've had, and that's that's purely because um, I, I like treating it live quite close to the area, um, and it's run by a farm called the Main Road. Um, there is a bit of housing, but I think there's enough of a barrier. I think Matthew said 25 metres, and actually the Main Road uh, already takes a lot of HGV traffic. Especially in the night, for example, it's my big piece of traffic bill. You, Steve? Um, as I, well, I've been stint on this committee, I do believe there's a two tier planning legislation on the will. Uh, I think that the haves and the have nots get treated very differently on this, this, this uh, committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and one thing I stand for is treating each application entirely on its merits but constructive arguments either for or against. And particularly, particularly when we are going for refusal against officers' recommendations, reasonable, well thought out, defendable reasons for refusal. And uh, I won't deviate now back on the committee, I won't move away from those ideals and, and the way we must, must deal with it. Yet again, we are faced with a successful commercial property, which we have given permission to for certain open hours, and the reasonable argument being put forward by the applicant who pays for an application bent to get treated uh, fairly and squarely is that this 
is a needed change for planning reasons and business reasons. And that's what the planning system is all about. This property is surrounded by residential properties. It is in a semi-commercial area, just like the last application site, there's a pub nearby. Remember the other application sites like the Johnny Pie nearby. There are there are there are, just there, are, this I'm sorry, there are residential properties on that side. And that is the delivery road. Okay, so that's where the deliveries will come from, whether it's wider or shorter, um, that's where the deliveries will come from. So I again think in terms of defendability, reasons for refusal, we would struggle to come up with. Um, so my view is that this application on its merits uh, stands uh, and should be given given due thought. Again, all, all the planning reasons go through my head, every application that goes through, and on the merits of this application it seems reasonable. But I do, I do sincerely believe that, that, that you know that the application we should really think longer and harder about defending reasons for refusal that we're going to go against officers' recommendations. So I'll put that down. Without referring to any other applications, I believe this stands on its merits. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, to my mind, there's not going to be as many residential properties doing on this as I've seen previously. That means I don't think it's enough. seem very acceptable to two, at least two of the board councillors and I'm sure a lot of the residents in that area are under that and I'm quite happy to go along with that. Thank you Dave. Paul? Thank you Chair, I'm with Councillor Johnson. I am a great Aldi fan but I don't think Aldi will close if we choose to limit its opening its delivery hours in certain areas of this borough. And I think in particular, I mean Councillor Fouts ended his contributions with saying as Dave Mitchell started this, we say we should take every application on its merits, although I think the previous couple of minutes of this, this contributions was completely the opposite. I'm taking this application on its own merits. I agree with Councillor Daniel and Councillor Brightmore. It's certainly not surrounded with residential properties as the previous site was, and also very importantly, there's only been one objection and no position. So therefore, I don't see that I can move the refusal on this application.